sorry, the clip just ended. God damn it, I hate this fucking laptop. I just touched the screen with my bandana and it went out. Anyway, I may as well start over. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chevy Show. That first thing was just the first little rough draft, I guess. So, anyway, today, sound check, one, two, three. Dog check for uh, OJJBT, ICAC, D4PP.PDF. Don't mess with me, because I know how to shoot. <laughs> Hello, Dorian A. Peters. Hello, Rhino. Hello, OJJBT, ICAC, Indian Country, and the rest of the world. Haters will have their day, so it's my day to talk about some other shit. A more interesting topic is, what would you do if you had a million dollars? One million American U.S. dollars? Not one million pesos like some people. A million pesos is only like $20,000 or so in DR. But one million U.S. dollars. Hmm. And a better question, what would you do if you had one million U.S. dollars at the age of 19 years old? Hmm. What would you do? I'm not talking about lottery winnings or inheritance. I mean, like, you really earned it from grinding. You know, you earned every cent of it from working. Say 20 hour days, never leaving your room, just all fucking day, right? Stacking, stacking, stacking bread, not buying nothing. No clothes, cars, girls, trips, nothing. Just work, 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 work. Like Rihanna, work, 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 work. <laughs> so let's say you actually amassed a small fortune, right? Through, the, through your own merits, you know? It was without ripping anybody off, without fucking doing any shiesty hood shit, nothing illegal, taxes paid, got your accounts and all that bullshit, everything's cool. Now what? Now what, nigga? You got the money in the bank, now what? Well, I'm going to go through this episode and tell you guys how I got it, how I earned it, how I fucked it up, and how I'm making it back. So, uh, and, oh, and also one more important thing, how, how can you do this? How can you earn a million dollars? yet still hide it from your family, friends, loved ones, close to ones. So, here's what I personally did. Uh, I drove a 20-year-old Volkswagen with $800 that I bought at a junkyard. Yeah. Uh, I later turned it into a race car or whatever. But that was my thing. It's like, most people are not good at, uh, especially being Americans, they want to live above their means. They want to credit up the ass and lifestyle of just debt and owing people and shit, you know? And I never really got along with that concept. I don't like bills, and I really don't like... I guess what makes me different than most people is I don't like shit. Like, shit doesn't impress me. Like, you notice I almost never wear a watch. I wouldn't own a watch currently. I don't give a fuck what time it is, what day it is. Most of the time, I, I care nothing for holidays. I don't celebrate Christmases, Thanksgiving, Valentine, Easter Bunny. St. Patrick's, I mean, there's like some pagan fucking holiday in America and Canada and the rest of the world, like, it seems like every two to three weeks there's some fucking Hallmark card holiday, and it just keeps people broke, broke than a motherfucker, you know, always, always some shit coming up, Mother's Day, Father's Day, <laughs> no, 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 not this nigga here, I celebrate my holidays when I want to, I take vacation when I want to, I work when I want to or when I need to, but I don't let anybody else's fucking calendar, dictates that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, if you guys can't tell by now, by the background, this is Soy Chai Poon and Patty, and I might have done another video on it, but I'm staying right on the dirty, dirty, dirty Lashad Street, where a nigga can get a massage for fucking two and three dollars plus tip for the hour, and I'm not bullshitting you. Two hundred baht is four dollars and forty cents, last I checked. It's a great deal, great country, beautiful people, friendly people. I fucking love it. So yeah, um, hence the uh, the million dollar thing. Um, I'm actually pretty cheap. I've been known to be pretty cheap with myself and generous with other people. It's something I'm trying to get away from. It's probably a trait that I got from just growing up to do for others and whatever and or doing for self. But that can be a bad thing, you know. It can be a bad thing. This lychee drink, by the way. Lychee fruit. Really, really, really hard to find in America. Thailand has good shit. Oh. 
So anyway, by the way, everything I talk about on the Shemmy Show is factual. I'm not like tooting my own horn, or I don't have to like make up stories about how this happened and that happened. You guys can look up a book on Amazon if you care. Written by me, just search for it. It's called E P I M P. E P I E P I M P. For those of you that don't know, it was a. Uh, some reviewers have said it's a poorly written autobiography, which I kind of halfway agree to. But I wrote it when I was 25 years old. I'm not much of an author. It's got a lot of typos in it, but it's a true, factual story. How I started with $65 in the 90s in uh, San Francisco, California, and turned it into a million dollars in about three years' time. You know, just by grinding, hustling, and mostly spamming away on the internet and having a great couple of niche uh, sites and ideas and shit going for me. It is what it is. I like working hard for myself, but working hard for other people. I would be working hard for other people and for yourself to understand this concept. So, anyway, a more important topic is like how. How can someone like myself, or how can you, if you're in the same shoes as me, how can you literally hide over a million dollars legally, taxes paid with an accountant, you know, check my guy, cpa.com, he's in California and Emeryville, if you don't believe me, check my numbers, nigga, taxes paid, money in the bank, how do you hide one million dollars liquid from your fucking family while you're literally in a room on a shitty laptop like this, banging away on the internet, you know? How do you do that? Well, start off by driving a 20-year-old Volkswagen that you work on yourself. And uh, you start off also by not having girls, girlfriends, and other people around you. And you just keep to yourself. And you don't buy clothes, watches, jewelry, Jordans. You don't have, like, payments and shit going out the windows and credit cards. And You know what I'm saying? It's like the average American self-included as I used to be when I was married or whatever, and it's like shit loads of debt. Like I used to get like mail stacks like thicker than my notepad here in the mailbox like every fucking, seems like every week or two, just with bills, bills, bills. Department store bills, credit card bills, car payments, this, that, this, that, all kinds of unnecessary insurances. And, you know, that, that seems to be where a lot of the bulk of the money went to, you know, grocery store shopping, this and that. I actually don't even buy that much food for myself now. I mean, I live off of literally protein powder, juice, here in Thailand, like street food. I had a 40 baht banana pancake for breakfast this morning. You know, like, I'll, I'll eat on a dollar or two a day. Like, this thing, kind of thing is difficult when you're not living by yourself. It's much easier to just take care of yourself than to look after people and pets and have all kinds of just other motherfuckers' shit to worry about. Other people consume food, water, electricity, they get sick, and this and that, and I can pretty much soldier it out, you know, soldiering it out is the way you stack your bread and build your assets and build your empire and watch it grow. When you have other people riding you out without contributing for a very long time, that just leaves your money rapidly, and that's my case, you know what I'm saying? If someone never grinds and had to earn a million dollars for themselves by themselves, they don't understand the man hours and the sacrifice that it takes to do that. This means no partying, no drinking, no drugs, no girlfriends, no this. Almost living a monk-like existence. Kind of like I'm doing now. Um, there's a concept on the internet you guys can look for. It's called MGTOW. I was doing this 20 years ago before the shit even, you know, the concept or whatever, I think. But search it. It's called M-G-T-O-W, if I'm spelling it correctly. Uh, it stands for men going their own way. First, and the first time I heard of it, I was like, man, this sounds like some gay shit. You know, these are guys that have, like, sworn off women, and they, like, live in the woods by themselves, and they don't have no bills to live off the grid, that kind of thing, to be extreme, I guess. And I'm not that fucking extreme. You know, I'm kind of a pussy addict. I love girls, massages, and, you know, fucking chicks and whatever. Sex is a part of life. I cannot exclude women from my life like that. I just can't. You know. I, can, I can have control over that addiction. I can't, uh, you know, girls are around, I'm going to drop them, sorry. I got to do this in the shimmy, it's the shimmy show. You know, for a nigga that, for a nigga that makes a living off of selling movies and shit with girls, how can I fucking write them off like that? Fuck that, make that shit entirely. But the concept is pretty interesting, though. It's pretty interesting. It's, uh, 
they're basically saying that you should not allow women to mislead you, as, as has been my case, and the case of many other men, men that have been going put through the ringer in the family court system, the divorce system, and they, they lose their houses and cars and assets and savings and pensions if they have them. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that close or whatever. So, you know, it's like I'm pretty unblackmailable myself, but imagine a motherfucker that's been working at a job or some, I don't know, city, government type, county job, anything, public payroll, you know what I'm saying? You worked this job for 20 something years, you've got a 401k, Roth IRA, you've got all this like supposed so called nest egg or some shit that the fucking crackers are holding up for you. But what happens when they pull the plug, or what happens when your girl decides she wants to just, you know, she's had enough of your shit, or, or she just wants your money and she decides to take a split and go to fucking uh, Aruba or Cuba or something and not ever see you again, you know, and your money is like fucked. So all those 50,000, 100,000 hours of your life you've clocked in, doing some probably dangerous life-threatening work, who knows, it's construct maybe you're a construction worker, police officer, security guard, I've done a lot of shitty jobs myself, but I'm just saying, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there watching this shit that have done, like, much more probably dangerous shit than I've done, putting their life on the line every day, you know what I'm saying, I, rel- I have it relatively easy, I think, you know, I'm a video guy, I get to make movies and do my fucking lab test, fuck porn stars and hop on airplanes and shit like that, but... I've done some shitty jobs in my day, too. I may have to do them again in the future, but some people have been doing this continuously since getting out of motherfucking high school and shit. So, to have one woman that's, like, past her expiration date, like, fucking bad milk, come and milk you for all this net worth asset, your estate, your house, your homes, your rental properties, whatever the fuck you got going on, and just tell you she's got a take it all, and the kids, fuck that half shit, most girls nowadays are going for everything, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it's really heartbreaking, you know, it's really something that a lot of people don't really recover from, and as I'm realizing with me, I'm almost 40 years old now, I'm 39 years old as of right now, uh, I'm about probably, generally speaking, about 10 to 12 years ahead of the curve of most people, most people that I know. Well, I went to school within my generation and shit, class of 96, high school or whatever. They're just now going through their first divorce or their first major breakup or their, their, their version 2.0 of themselves. But I'm on version 3.0. You know, my fucking kids are like fucking almost out of high school, this, that, and the other. And some of you niggas are just going through your first breakup. And I'm just sitting by watching the fireworks. Like, mm, mm, mm. So you motherfuckers to come to the Dominican Republic 10 years ago. I told you to come to Thailand 10 years ago. I told you niggas. But you know, niggas don't want to be fat, neat, as crazy. Y'all thought it was crazy. That shimmy guy is crazy. <laughs> Reminds me of some other people I know. Don't mess with me because I know how to do it. DA. The DA guy. <laughs> we'll get to you in another show episode. These shades. Dollar Tree Shades, nigga. Corny ass motherfucker. Look at my other shows. Anyway, um, yeah. So check this out. Look at my book again on Amazon if you want. If you like. Recap it. Maybe I'll put even a link for the fucking PDF at this point. Or make a fucking video about it. But, um, writing a book when I was 25 about having a million dollars. You know? What would you do if you had a million dollars when you were 19 years old? Unmarried, no girlfriend, nerdy. I look pretty much the same as I did now, except for I had a big fucking afro back then up to here. You know. I was so cheap, I used to cut my own hair with clippers and uh, all that shit just to save money. One trait of rich or people that are uh, wealthy, I should say, is not rich, is that they tend to not want to spend any money at all on anything. Like no jewelry, watches, Air Jordans, Mercedes Benz, telephones, iPhones. I don't like consumer shit because, like, people that people that are creative that build shit for a living, they like to make their own shit and not buy other shit. It's like every item that you purchase, I realize that every little trinket, every fucking bandana that I purchase or whatever, it sets me back a little bit from 
my goals of stacking bread. You know what I'm saying? So like, why buy shit? You know, it's a, I like wrestle with shit for price wise for myself. Like, I'm wearing like a Thailand Adidas shirt I bought for 200 baht, and I'm like, that's four dollars and forty cents here. And I'm like, okay, I really needed the shirt because I don't have no clean clothes now. But it's like, I seldom buy clothes. I wear plain motherfucking t-shirts, no jewelry. I got good running shoes, cheap running shoes, but I got okay quality running shoes because I'm a runner. But like, I don't like buying shit. I have 99 cent shades. I have, I'm staying in an apartment right now on Soy Chaya food. You know, I'm a cheap old building right now, currently, because I'm just going up and down for massages and shit like that. But I mean, I don't like to expend or blow too money unnecessarily. Look at my phone here. I have a whole Blackberry in the crib with a cracked motherfucking screen that cracked eight ways from motherfucking Sunday that barely fucking works. You know, the screen only half of it works. Three years old, you know, maybe going on four years old now, you know. Why? Because I don't like buying new shit. New telephones cost money. The fuck do I look like having a $500,000 phone in my pocket? Are you crazy? I'm just going to drop it and crack the screen like the rest of them eventually. Fuck. You know, fuck what the fuck's trending. What the fuck you people are on. That other, that other little phone I got, I got the little small TV. Soya 7S, that was a good buy to let the motherfucker crack the screen too. So like I say, everything breaks. Maybe I'm just rough with shit, but I mean, I don't like spending money on shit, people. I really don't. So, so in order to like hide this million dollars assets from like family, friends, and others, if you're like me and you don't ever change shit, nobody ever really knows. It's not going to brag about that you have money in the bank. You know? I know Mr. Uh, I can't let this nigga go because he's just done so much stupid shit. But Mr. Ray-Ban nigga Dorian A. Peters comes with me to the Dominican Republic one time, and I take him to an ATM across the street from a police station in Sisua. This motherfucker actually goes with his shades on, because he doesn't go without them, you know. Withdraws some money from the ATM. The nigga shows me his ATM receipt and says, look, I got a million pesos, shimmy. I got a million pesos. Like $20,000 or something in the bank. Like, who the fuck does that? Have you ever? I have never ever showed an ATM receipt to another nigga or another bitch to brag about how much money in my fucking bank that I have, you know? Let alone $20,000. Nigga, you can't even buy a decent car for that. Like, a million pesos. I'm talking about one million US dollars here. Taxes paid and all that shit. So if you have all this money, I had all this money. I'm still driving a 20 year old Volkswagen Rabbit. A little race car or whatever. Um, just budget, budget, budget. I don't like shit. I don't like jewelry, gold, Jordan's General Motor products, fucking live in a regular ass house. Don't, uh, it's a trait of wealthy people. Wealthy people just don't like bleeding out money. They like to conserve, save, and grow what they have, you know? Reinvest that back into the business. I don't like tithe, I don't go to church, period, but I don't like tithe money to churches or whatever. I spend money on experiences and things that matter to me. You know what I'm saying? I spend, if I get money, I'll spend it on making more movies or making, a, making something that can further turn that money back into me rather than to uh, fucking uh, pay the interest monster. Most people are probably paying like 30 or 40% of their earnings to interest. Like, that means they're not getting nothing in return. The interest is just imaginary fucking numbers on fucking pieces of paper. You know? Hey, good morning. But, like, yeah, man, interest, interest monster will fucking eat up people, and that's what people, I think that's what keeps people stuck in America, really. They're just paying interest all the time. Interest on their fucking credit cards. Interest on the gas their car already burned. Interest on their groceries. Interest on their house. Unnecessary shit, you know, like if you own your own house, whatever, you don't have to have to pay mortgage insurance, which is really insurance for nothing. Everything is optional at some, some points or whatever. Um, I've even read, I don't know if it's still true, I've read that in California, uh, in the DMV manual, if you get a $50,000 bond with the state, that is, you can have that in lieu of actually paying car insurance every month. I don't know if that's still valid, but I believe that was in the book back in the 90s. There's all kinds of ways to save money if you're not just expending interest 
that means car payments, this and that. And that was one of the ways I went broke, you know, just living above my means, being too heavily leveraged on some things, mortgages, cars, car notes, and shit that I never got into. And that's how a motherfucker went broke. Once you have a business and you stop, like, feeding the monster and you just stop, uh, you stop reinvesting in it, it's like dying, you know? You gotta keep having money on hand for marketing and expansion. In my case, new content and new this and new sites. And if you don't have that, shit just gets stagnant. And it's like, so, fuck. So, yeah, um, this is, and, you know, if you're a poor person, you might not understand what the fuck I'm talking about. I might as well be speaking Japanese right now. You know, because you have no concept of what it's like to ever even have money grow and work for you. Poor people spend money as soon as they get it. As soon as they get it. Sometimes the poor is. Sometimes their money is already, like, you know, I talk to some people, mostly girls, and they'll be like, you know, I got my budget for this, this, and this, and I got this car note, and I got this, that, and that, and that to pay for. And the money hasn't even hit the motherfucking bank yet. Check it out, it's yet, and, uh, it's the poverty cycle replicates themselves. You know, motherfucking, motherfucking welfare queens and shit will live high on the hog for two or three days out of the month, and the other 27 days might turn right, you know? God damn. That's one of the tragedies of being uneducated and not working for yourself. It's like you don't realize how money is generated. You don't, if you don't, okay. Take for instance the welfare queen concept. You know, if, if a woman receives social assistance from a government, welfare or whatever you want to call it or whatever, um, she's not going to realize how that money got there or how did the government extract that money from a motherfucker like me and a bunch of other motherfuckers in order to put it into her pocketbook or whatever every month. She doesn't have, there's a disconnect. She thinks the money just is like free money. There ain't no motherfucking such thing as free money. That shit is all deducted from motherfuckers' paychecks and W-2s and from everybody. So, I don't believe. But since there's that disconnect there, they're not actually putting in, you know, hundreds of hours every couple of weeks or whatever in order to receive this money. They think it's free, so they take it for granted because they don't, oh, more's coming next month. <laughs> an amazing, interesting concept, you know, like here in Thailand, they don't have this social welfare concept, other than the motherfucker gives them a free phone card minutes and a bag of rice or something, if they qualify, but I mean, North America is fucking, girls are spoiled, you know, they don't have to sell pussy and this and that, they don't have to work, they don't have to, uh, whatever, there's a common saying in patty here, the patty is, they call it, that, uh, every girl is just one baby away from patty one baby away from getting the streets, you know, becoming a massage girl and working to feed that feed the family or whatever. You know, it's something, it's something. It's really something. In America, you know, people, motherfuckers. <sighs> anyway, let me look on this laptop screen here. I wrote some notes, I'm rambling once again. This is gonna be a long show, but fuck it. Okay, the show is about how to hide a million dollars from your I wrote on here, drive a 20-year-old Volkswagen and smile. <laughs> I love 20-year-old Volkswagens. Have that work ethic. What else do I write on here? No girlfriends. Spam, spam, spam. Rinse and repeat. Do not spend. Drive the same car. Save. Stack your bread. Don't buy clothes. Eat noodles. Be a ramen motherfucker. Be a Thai motherfucker with the mama noodles. Live on pad Thai. Work ethic. Poor people and uneducated people just do not understand. Mostly work ethic. You know, they're entitled, usually hyper religious. Their training has brought them up to believe the world owes them something. You know, the world doesn't owe you shit. And I'm telling you, if you are not born unless you're a motherfucking Saudi Arabian born in Qatar or some shit where there's oil in the ground or whatever, the government ain't taking care of you in most cases. So, I don't know, there's some. European nations, maybe Norway, Switzerland, some shit like that where they have social, uh, what do they call that, UBI, Universal Basic Income, but for most of the world, it's not going to happen, you know what I'm saying? So, for a nigga like me that doesn't believe in heaven, hell, gods, devils, afterlife, and all this and that, I'm here to get it while I can, 
in how I live every day. And that's what it is. You got to make the most of the hours in your days. So it means you got to get up early, take care of your health, so you don't have health care bills, so you have a healthy body and energy to do shit and be productive. And motherfuckers see me running to the crack of dawn, 5, 6, 7 a.m. Why? So I can be in shape and do shit and have energy to be productive and healthy, so I don't have to go to the fucking CVS or Walgreens pharmacy and have a motherfucking duffel bag of pills every month. It's going to cost me fucking five, six, seven hundred dollars for. Are mostly avoidable. You know, I spend my money on healthy food if I do, protein powder, vitamins, shit. You know, live, learn from motherfuckers who are smarter than you. Come on, people. Come on. Everybody around me, tooting my own horn here, too, too. everybody around here tells me that uh, I don't look like I'm 40 years old. Motherfuckers tell me I look like I'm 25 and shit. Whatever. So I die to be brave, I'm brave on my side. But I mean, yeah, man, stay in fucking shape. Your health is, if you don't have your health, all your bread and all your shit don't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a shiny BMW outside. It doesn't matter, motherfucker, if you can't walk and you got the gout in your leg and you can't fuck, run, jump, swim. What the fuck is all that going to be? You know what I'm saying? You don't have a nice handicapped motherfucking parking space unless you don't have. And you're going to be spending all your fucking years in doctor's offices and prescription lines. Driving motherfucking electric shopping carts around the stores and shit. What the fuck kind of life is that? Yeah, be like y'all. So, I get up early and I exercise early so that I can put myself first, put my health in whatever first. And uh, yeah, why would you neglect yourself? You know, if you read my book and whatever, you can see the process of where I went like 180 pounds to 300 pounds. Why? Because I neglected myself. I put my own needs last. It's marriage. You know? But that was a very bad thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Being empathic and trying to save a motherfucker that's not even trying to help her help themselves is a very bad idea. And I'm going to do another show about that, about my marriage. You know? I call it the Geneva Files or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really fucked. You know, it's really fucked. You know, when I, when I look back in hindsight now, you know what I'm saying? The amount, the amount of years that I can't get back, and the money can always be re-earned and regenerated, but time cannot, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, motherfuckers don't understand, you know? Everyone says that money doesn't matter, and money's not important. That's not true. If you put in hours, if I put in hours and decades of my life to build something, only to have somebody come along and just pretend like it, oh, it doesn't matter, well, they're saying that those years of your life don't matter. So those hours that Sacrifice having a social life and friends and this and that and relationships don't matter. That's bullshit. Everyone matters. You know, you can't. That would be like me going to a woman and saying, "Hey, I want you to buy me a motherfucking, I want a bulldozer, a yacht, and uh, a motherfucking rocket ship in a hotel. You do this for me if you love me." You know, it's, it sounds ludicrous, but this is really what motherfucking a lot of women do, like this reverse dowry shit. You know. Just because a woman has a fucking stinky hole between her legs, you know. I got a hole in my ear that looks just like a pussy hole, you know what I'm saying? It's like, big fucking deal. You got titties? I used to be fat, look, I have titties too, you know. I don't care. You're not special. Women are not special. The fuck? All human life is valuable and equally important, you know, and, uh, unfortunately, Western society... Sorry, my microphone slipped there. Like I was saying, uh, I said that, uh, yeah. all human life is valuable, and Western society will have you believe that men's lives are less valuable than women. And I strongly disagree with that concept. Here in the Far East, at least men are respected, and men's lives have value, too. You know, it's not just like, oh, I'm a woman, and so and so, so and so, society's going to just carry me. Fuck out of here. You know the United States of America is only 5% of the world's population? Only 5%. That means the other 95% does not think like you motherfuckers who are listening to me properly. It's mostly a North American audience, I think. <sighs> USA and Canada goes against uh, the 
way like 95% of the world is thinking. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah, wow. What a fucking country, huh? <sighs> so, like, yeah, man, just don't, uh, don't waste your heartbeats. Do, 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 do. You can't get back with a motherfucker that does not care. And don't live in a society that doesn't care about you, that doesn't value your life. You know, go somewhere that does. If you live in a house with somebody that doesn't respect you, or someone that doesn't treat you well, that treats you substandardly, or abuses you, or is violent towards you, or some shit like that, you don't have to put up with that. You're a stupid motherfucker if you continue living that way, too. If you don't value your own life, then you know, neither is anyone else. Yeah. I'll just fuck out here. Let me go back inside and let AC soon. Thanks for watching the Shinny Show to the 30 minute mark so far. <laughs> I could cut this off, but I'm not. So what else can I rant about before I close the stream? I think I see battery power on here. Some more notes that I put on there. Uh, stream, reading, reading, reading. I wrote, the truth is in... The truth is what is in front of your eyes unfolding. I'm trying to read my own notes here. The truth, is in, the truth is what is in front of your eyes unfolding. That's real life. You're alive reading this right now. That's all that matters. Make the most of your life. Live for yourself. Put yourself first. Don't neglect yourself to save others. Who's risking their neck for you to live in a big house with a motherfucking swimming pool and to drive big shiny cars and shit? Is anyone else out there on the planet putting themselves on the line, putting their own nuts and neck on the chopping block every day just so that you can be comfortable and live in a nice 64 degree air conditioned home because you have fucking diabetes? high blood pressure, thyroid, and who knows, God knows what other health problems because you have a bad diet where you eat pizza and fucking salad with bacon grease and <laughs> I'm talking about my ex-wife to me in the years. Like, there's a show coming up all about this here. Believe me. When I fuck up, believe me, it's like I'm going to deconstruct shit once shit fails. Just like if a motor blew up on my car, you know, most I can do this frequently or whatever. It's like I can accept an engine failure, but once the motherfucker breaks down and it's broken already, getting that socket wrench out, I'm tearing that motherfucker down from the Hemholtz resonator at the top down to the motherfucking washer on the fucking oil pan on the bottom. Just, it's gonna be like a pile of Legos on the ground by the time I'm done with it so that I can disassemble and see all the fucked up gears and parts and O-rings that just went with it, you know? So, I'm gonna deconstruct this shit here, but that's just a taste of it, yo. So I'm like, why put your life on the line? Why would I risk my life, which I cannot get back? You know what I'm saying? I can't get back my years and this and that. Why would I do this for someone that doesn't give a fuck about me? That's stupid. That's really stupid. If someone cares about you, they would have behaviors that indicate that they care about you. More than lip service. More than little fucking words. Behaviors. Actions. What are they doing time-wise for you? To show that, hey, I really care about you. Hey, thanks for coming into my life and doing X, Y, and Z for me because that shows that you appreciate me or that you value me. Thank you for giving your time to me to make me comfortable. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What happens when people are uh, ungrateful to that degree? And they just take it for granted. That's called entitlement. With a taste of feminism and hypergamy, of course. For those of you that don't know what hypergamy is or hypergamy, it's a, it's a derivative of like, you know what polygamy is, right? Polygamy or monogamy, monogamy. Look at the root words of these things. Like, monogamy basically, you know, that's, that means like one man, one woman relationship. Your typical marriage or relationship in America. That's monogamy, monogamy. Polygamy, polygamy is like the Mormon shit, like the Muslim thing. You have three wives, five wives, whatever. Monogamy. Pop, monogamy, polygamy, and what is hypergamy or hypergamy? That's almost like a dowry based system wherein uh, women only will marry up and not down. It's very common. You know, most most girls are not going to go and marry uh, you know, a sick homeless man on the street with no money. Not that you can't blame them, but I mean, that's it's the reality. So it exists to some degree in society, but it's very extreme in Western American societies. You know, it's like to the point where, like, say in Miami, you can't even talk to a bitch unless you have a Rolex on your wrist or something, and a Ferrari. So, 
that, that's what hypergamy is. You know, women want the cream of the crop. And, uh, and that one down here, well, nice girls on the street down here. That's why I'm on Soy Chaya. But that's why um, the shit exists to an extreme level. You know what I'm saying? Women want to go up. But a lot of times, like, uh, men do not realize their own market value. Women more so will pick from the top 20% of, uh, of whatever the debt is the way it is. So, as a man, if you have that million dollars, you pretty much can, you're at the top of the deck and you can have your choosing, so to speak. And that's very sexist. I mean, hypergamy is very sexist or whatever. The rich man gets the girl, so to speak. Or at least he has, he has first choice. So I didn't realize this at such a young age, so hypergamy got me. But, yeah, man, entitled motherfucking people, entitled people can kiss my ass, the world don't know shit, you think that you, because you were born with a different set of genitals, the motherfuckers are just going to fucking give you shit for the rest of your life, you know, like, the fuck out of here, you know, that's an extreme version of prostitution, usually it's these kind of women that really are against prostitution, pornography, and sex work. Yet they want a man with a million motherfucking dollars. They want a fucking doctor or an internet pornographer, programmer, hacker dude like me. You know, it's like in most interesting concepts, the most interesting concept, they're the most extreme motherfucking hoes on the planet. Okay? Do you realize what I'm saying here? The most extreme hoes on the planet also hate sex workers, hoes, strippers, porn stars, and other derivatives girls that I like, who actually play the hypergamy game with men. Interesting. So interesting. Sounds just like the OJJDPICAC in Indian country. <laughs> the motherfuckers are going to get it, dog. But uh, they're not They're not kidding. This is not their day. I'm trying my best not to talk about these niggas today. They, they deserve their own motherfucking three-hour roast, okay? So does Geneva. The XY files and a couple other motherfuckers. But it's like, yeah, that day is a kind of, oh my gosh, that's my fucking legs here. Ah! It comes to me, ah, so tight. I don't think I'm just going to be able to go to the street. Anyway, uh, yeah, so check this out. Here's an interesting concept. You guys know what a salvage title car is, right? Like, say, say your car has been. Wrecked, rolled over, stolen, whatever. State Farm, Allstate, or whoever will usually put a brand on the title and say, car is salvaged, you buy the options for two. I'm a fan of salvage title cars. They often turn them into race cars or just ride them around or paint them up and fix them, whatever, right? Now, most people would not pay a million dollars for a motherfucking salvage title car with a cracked frame, it's been rolled over, torched, vandalized. My fucking missing door handle, bumper, I mean, like, interior strip, gutted, electrical fires, who knows. Most people would not pay a million dollars for this car just because they feel bad for it, and because they want to restore it, and because they see potential. That's illogical, right? Because you could, that means that you could go ahead and just, why not just buy a car that's not already fucked up? You know, unless you have something to prove or whatever. And I often thought this about myself, like, I'm talking about my ex-wife here. I'm using, literally, I'm using her as an example. She's an example, of basically, if she were a car, at the time I got married, she would be a salvage title motherfucking car, okay? And I don't mind salvage title cars. Well, I don't think the salvage title cars are worth paying a premium for. They're definitely not worth dumping a million dollars into. I will say that. I dumped a million dollars into a salvage title car. I'm talking about my baby mama here, and she's listening to this. I hope she's listening to this, because it's the motherfucking truth. You know what I'm saying? If you're a motherfucking 300-pound white woman from Canada, you have no money, bad health, no home, no credit or bad credit, no education or no degrees, you know, dropped out of college just like me, whatever, and you got someone that's not judgmental about all these problems, he says to you, yo, I just want someone that accepts me for who I am. This is what I do for a living, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to give up for the time being young. My family, thanks. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was like, well, because I'd be born, no one will like me, all that kind of shit. Yeah, that's what I was fed back as feedback. You know? I got someone that's, she's told me the story, though. It doesn't matter what you do. 
Meanwhile, she's the most motherfucking porn-hating person on the planet. With all this money goes to buying her expensive $300,000 homes, Mercedes-Benz trucks, and cars, and all the fucking furniture and shit in the world, and an extreme grocery budget. I mean, Costco like a motherfucker. I think at some points I was spending over a G a month, $1,200 a month in fucking food. Like, fuck. Credit up the ass maxed out. I'm like, doesn't take long to deplete a million dollars, yo. Soon enough, I don't have money to dump back into the business and sales are going, yeah, like a fucking plane crash in slow motion, spiraling out of control. So it's like, I could blame myself, inexperienced, marriage. A lot of people, their first marriage fucks up, the mind catastrophically imploded, but at least it happened at a young age, and I was able to look at things and uh, start the long, arduous process of rebuilding myself, my health, my business, and everything from the, from the fucking... Heart, you know. Some of the fuckers, it's like, they're just not getting to that point now it, 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 in their 40s and shit, and I'm just like, hey, that was me back then. Hope y'all been having fun. <laughs> but that shit was no fun for me. You know, I did the whole immigration thing, I've lived abroad, I've done so many fucking shit jobs to support my family, kids, this and that, and I still get run through the ringer, I still get downed, I still get publicly shamed, he didn't need it to the rest of their little motherfucking abilities. But, at the end of the day, I still got the respect of my kids. I still got my life and my own self, and uh, I'm alive to tell this story. A lot of motherfuckers jump off of buildings over shit like this. You know, I know some people that couldn't take this pain, pressure, this and that. I know some people that fucking work, fucking work, they killed themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because the pressure got too much, and their bitchy wife was too much. Talking about you, Grace and Chris. Read that other blog or whatever. You know, it's like, fuck. So it's very possible to push a man to the motherfucking breaking point where it's like, fuck, how much shit do you want from me? How much of my more of my life force do you want to deplete? Have I not done enough to prove that I fucking love you and care about you? It's not enough? It's all only about the money? It's only about what your, only your comfort matters? God damn. That rules hyperbole, feminism, American society, entitlement. Seriously, fuck you, dude. You wonder why so many men move abroad to Thailand and Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Colombia. It's like, these countries are full of men, expats, expatriates from the U.S. and Canada. This street, particularly here, Soy Chaya Poon and others, Soy Six and whatever, they're lo- motherfucking bars and discos lined up and down with mostly 50-ish men. They're telling me the same story about how their wife took all their money or all their pension all their retirement this and that, and she ran off with some other motherfucker, and this and that, you know, it's a sad story that repeats itself often, and the names only change, it's like, once men get tired of being run through the motherfucking ringer, they come, (laughs) they come to other countries as expats, and they call them sex tourists, and this and that, but they're just tired of the shit, this whole street's full of motherfuckers just like me, you know, they've had enough of it, they've had enough of being built, they've had enough of being run through the family court system, they love their kids, they're all showing me pictures of their kids on the phone and this and that and whatever, and it's like, my wife ran off with the kids, she took the house, she took everything, and I'm like, oh man, well, at least I'm not alone, but I mean, that's a sad thing. Western society depletes and robs men of fucking everything, and it's like, we gotta come abroad to like, fucking gain their power back and just, you know, it's not just about coming here to get pussy and get massages, it's about coming back to fucking get a little bit more control over your life, because it just, like, beats the fuck out of men. America, Canada, and whatever, the Western world, probably the UK also, it just beats the fuck out of men, to the point where we're not even feeling like men anymore. It's like, they're so, you get so pussified or whatever from, from all the time, men ain't shit, niggas ain't shit, this ain't that, this ain't that, and you can't get a girl who even respects you, or even just a society that treats you fairly, it's like, okay. Got my passport, jumping on the plane, fuck you people. And that's it, because life is short. Motherfuckers, people don't realize they can just drop dead at any motherfucking second. I say this every day, niggas can get hit by a car, bus, truck, train, anytime, and it's all over. You know, it's, it's a wrap. So why not be happy? Why not live a little bit? Why not do something for yourself after the world has robbed you and completed you so much? Fuck. Shaking my head. I'm glad I figured this shit out of my 30s, man. Motherfuckers, I know people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s that are 
still, they're still a slave to the system. You know, all they can do at home is worry about going to Home Depot and getting mulch on sale, doing old man shit, sitting in McDonald's drinking 99 cent coffee every day, talking about how good shit was in the 70s and shit. You know, fuck that shit, man. You guys, I don't know. Why are you not living your life? You know, I guess the information's out there on the internet now. I guess I guess that I have a lower tolerance for pain, and uh, I just don't like suffering. I don't like extended bouts of suffering when I know that there's another way. There's always got to be another motherfucking way. God damn. I say I don't I don't fucking talk fast. You know, just listen slow. You guys will realize that ten years from now. Trust me, you play this motherfucking shit 10 years from now, or if you're like in your 30s or whatever, in your 20s, after you've been run through the motherfucking ringer in the system, and you've been accused of all that fucking fuck-ass shit, family court, this and that, and your kids are gone and taken away, you ain't got no more motherfucking dogs and cats and shit in the house, and it's all quiet, and you live in a little shitty apartment, or you're sleeping in your motherfucking truck or van, because your woman took everything, and now you got like a record or some shit, and you can't get a job somewhere, and whatever. Don't say that the Shimmy Show didn't tell you it's going to happen. It's going to happen to you no matter how motherfucking good you think you are. I'm a motherfucking honor student. 3.83 GPA. 117 IQ. High SAT. Motherfucking this, that, and the other. And it still happens to me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you write books. Mr. Race Car Driver. This, that, and the other. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a motherfucking movie star, porn star, Motherfucking global traveling James Bond type of motherfucker. It does not matter. The society is not set up in USA and Canada for you to prosper and thrive. All it takes is for just one pussy ass hoe, like that Raina girl or some other shit, and that doesn't mean that an example, or just some other accusation for a girl to say you did this or did that or he did that, and it ain't even got to be true. It ain't even got to be true, and you're done. Now what? Now you better hop on a plane. <laughs> don't say I didn't tell you so, motherfuckers. You know, don't say I didn't tell you so. Hey, on another note here, by the way, um, this this affects everybody, by the way, not just me. This affects you, 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 you. Um, it's about the devaluation of the U.S. dollar, man. Here in the motherfucking, uh, I haven't been here in like almost a year, right? And the last time I was here, U.S. dollar was worth thirty-four dollars in Thailand, bought, bought to U.S. in conversion, and uh, that shit has dropped over ten percent in like a year, down to fucking another fucking one bullshit. Not the currency place you bet gave me twenty-eight on the dollar, and another one gave me the, the current fair rate was thirty-one or some shit. So you go from thirty-four to thirty-one and thirty and even twenty-eight. I think I do the math. That's around ten to twelve percent devaluation in one year. Basically, I'm trying to say that my money doesn't buy what it used to buy here. Like if I change a thousand dollars here, I would have got say thirty-four thousand bought last year. And this year, I only get thirty thousand, twenty-eight thousand, which means I'm short by five or six thousand bought per thousand, which means like I'm losing over a motherfucking hundred and fifty dollars. That's almost fifteen percent devaluation. Pissing me off even thinking about it, you know? So, my question is what the fuck is going on with the US dollar? Why is it tanking so rapidly? It's like in a motherfucking free fall. Is it going to be down another 15% next year? Motherfuckers that got money in the bank, it's just evaporating overnight. And you're inside the United States of America, you don't realize this. You know, because you're just like, oh, well, gas costs what it is, and everything still costs the same. You go abroad and your shit don't buy what it used to buy, you're like, I'm like, Try spending your money outside of America and see. So, those of you that have money in the bank or whatever, I'm not, don't do that Bitcoin scam shit, but it's like, uh, like the other motherfucking black ass blog. What the fuck is that dumb thing? Solo TV 84 was talking some shit about buy Bitcoin, and I was laughing at him, and I'm joining on him because he teased me and fucking ragged on me. How your Bitcoin's doing now, nigga? I just looked at the news and we're down to like 9,800 or something. Stupid motherfucker. Fuck your shit, nigga, by the way. Hating on me. You don't even know me, motherfucker. But always niggers hate me. You know? Why is it that black people hate on other black people so hard? Why are you hating on porn? You don't like porn? You got shows about Mia Khalifa and shit? Hating ass niggas. Can't 
damn it, it's too high, yeah. But anyway, that currency devaluation thing, man. <sighs> it, it's something to like just have to watch money evaporate and not, you know, some other stuff. It's like you work hard for shit, you stack it. So you don't matter if you put it in a motherfucking mattress, pillowcase, safe, bank, either way, it's fucking evaporating. So let's just have money in other currencies or whatever. Damn. What the fuck are you doing, Trump? What if I can... If you travel the globe, you know what I'm talking about, too. You, know, you get paid in the U.S. dollars. But this place isn't going to be the same 10 years from now, I imagine. So do what you can while you can with that money. Because soon enough, American dollars might be a motherfucking car here. Well, fucking, uh, I might have to be staying on soy chai thing on purpose in these old Bourbon Street-ass apartments. You see, where, you see what it looks like over here? Can you send guys you can see? I doubt it. Too much sun. Fuck. Anyway. Yeah. So, my, my topic or my story is, anyway, um, don't pay a million dollars for a salvage type of part of the crash. Accept it for what it is. If you fuck up in life, you know, just remember, you can always get married multiple times. You can always have more kids. Just because you're in this house doesn't mean you have to live in it forever. You know, you can always change everything. You can even change your body. If you're fucking fat right now, it can be changed. I used to be 300 pounds. I used to be fucking homeless. I used to be a lot of things. All these things are changeable. I used to be bald when I got hair. My own fucking hair. You know, Rogaine, Propecia, Google Solutions. Things are... Solutions are available if you look for them. And if you put in the work and realize that things take time. Everything is a process. Getting fit is a process. Getting six-pack abs is a process. Fucking always, like the two might be born and brag about or whatever. Or well, just eat, I'm not that uh, cut up right now. You know, but it's like, everything is a process. Building wealth is a process. Building a business is a process. Growing a business is a process. Growing a relationship is a process. Everything takes time if you're willing to commit. Nothing happens overnight. Stop doing scratch off motherfucking lottery tickets and shit. Stop looking for a quick fix. Stop thinking about trying to get, like, surgeries and shit to modify your body. And just put in the work. Put in the gym time. Eat healthier. I'm preaching, but I'm just saying. It's like you got to beat this shit in niggers' heads. That, like, there's no shortcuts. Progress is painful. Like I told my old hairdressers who ripped me off with the fucking hoverboards and shit. Weight loss and shit is painful. Painful. And most people don't want to accept the pain. Most people don't want to do the work. Most people don't want to put in the work. You're not going to get the motherfucking results. Quit waiting for a quick fix. There's no motherfucking savior coming. Jesus Christ and Buddha and Allah are not coming back to save you. I'm sorry to tell you this. You know what I'm saying? Everything is on you. Fuck. Imagine how foolish I would be to just wait, keep waiting at my house for something to happen. Or what if I were still waiting in Canada for something to happen. What if I was still waiting? <laughs> Don't mess with me because I know how to shoot. Dorian A.T. What if I just kept waiting for shit to happen instead of making shit happen? What if I didn't do the shimmy show? What if I didn't make websites? What if I didn't start 10, 12, 20 years ago? You know what I'm saying? Everything is a process. If you want to even do immigration, it's a process. It takes years. Things take years to accomplish, and everything stacks up 1% at a time. Yeah. Realize that. You know? There's a lot more things that I want to do in life, you know. I might have a dozen more motherfucking children. You know what I'm saying? I, I might get married a dozen more times. I might buy a dozen more houses or more. I'll probably buy a dozen more cars. I do everything because I'm not entitled. I'm willing to work for it. I'm willing to get up at 5 and 6 a.m. and sometimes 3 and 4 a.m. and work out and not go to sleep and work on my shit and blog and spam and keep shooting movies. Because I don't give a fuck. And I like the work. I like the grind. I like the hustle. I like running. I got the heart to do it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have the heart, if you don't have the muscle and the hustle, then you ain't going to have shit. And I would say to anybody out there, the best piece of relationship advice I could give you, if you're a real passionate, grinding, entrepreneurial motherfucker, 
don't get anybody, or don't fuck with anybody that's not even within 10 or 15% of the level that you're on. You know? They have to have their own shit going on. I'm not really interested in fucking with any girls or whatever, unless they're doing their own thing. Unless they either have their own business or work out there for their own business. It doesn't matter. She's got to have that work ethic. She's got to work out. She's got to be pretty much somewhat equivalent around my level. That's all that I'm saying. That's my own, that's my own hyperbole. I don't care if she got titties. I don't care about this one and the other. I don't care how old or young she is. I don't fucking care. Everything can be adjusted. People's bodies can be modified. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers bank account. Can be modified. Their businesses can be modified. Their occupations can be modified. But their work ethic, it cannot be modified. You know, no more entitlement. No more extreme hyperbole. You can have it to a degree. I can understand that. I can understand people's desire to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? A woman wants a big motherfucking Mercedes Benz. You know what I'm saying? She better have more than a motherfucking bicycle or some Adidas right now. I tell you that. You're not going to go from here to there. Not with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not Captain Save the I'm not your Savior, and I'm not Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Help you as religious people. God helps those who help themselves. Well, I help those who are, who are also on the path to doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? You've got to be somewhat on that route. You know? You at least got to be on the right track. You can be on the wrong train, but you got to be on the right track. You know what I'm saying? That's all the there is to it. At the end of the day, all girls are the same to me. No matter what. If you wipe behind her ears with a motherfucking towel, I bet it's gonna come back dirty no matter how fine the bitch is. So <laughs> it is what it is, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? This is <sighs> goddamn mic. This motherfucking microphone keeps falling out from my shirt or whatever. I really gotta buy me the clip. So anyway, I'm almost at the one hour mark here. Thank you for watching the Chevy show. Um, plug me if you like or whatever. Follow me. Twitter, Chevy, Triple X, whatever. Uh, buy my movies. I want your money, honey. Etc. Etc. You can look me up on the internet. Books, movies, DVDs, websites. I fuck your favorite porn stars. This and that and the other. My travel blog. I'm a racer. I like 5 Ks, 10 Ks, 10 miles. I love Thailand, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, anywhere tropical and sunny. Like snow that much, Canada's all right. You know, I am Canadian, like most of you know. So, is what it is, man. But um, that's me. You know, I hope this, this is just me being real. I hope that you guys could have learned something from me. Thanks for listening and watching so far. Um, watch my other shows. You still fucking care. I do this for me, and it's been great listening to myself talk. Here. <laughs> Should be signing out from Troy Chayapun here, live in Thailand. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? This is it. This is it. This is your life. Go out there and live it and love it. I hope things are going well for you guys back in the Western world. I'll see you when I see you in a couple more months. Maybe. <laughs> I'm having too much motherfucking fun. Y'all look and see what's going on down here on the street today. It's like, it's pretty, uh, can I? Eh. Can't really. Can't really see what's going on down there quite yet. It's, like in the daytime, there's not too much action going on here. Okay. I'll go on the next time. Anyway, thank you for listening to me. This is another episode of the Chevy Show, Peace and Hair Grease. Signing out. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, like the, I just saw in the news too today, DJ Khaled said he don't eat no pussy. <laughs> Nigga looks like he eats everything else though. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I love Thailand. Anyway, Peace and Hair Grease call, and, uh, yeah, buy my movies. I want your money. Thanks for watching the show. Out of here.